So go ahead, continue. So special victims unit. Yeah, and we had uh, you know trial by jury. I mean, they it, but the thing was that they they never coordinated within the offices, and so uh, we were constantly. I have my interns meeting my interns, coming and going, going back and forth to law and order. Of course, we booked a lot of law and orders during those times. We still do, and um, as you know, and uh, we uh, you know couldn't complain about those things. Law and Order, by the way, was the last of the major shows to go electronic. Once they went electronic, we no longer had to sum submit headshots and resumes. If you were to come to me back in the old days and say, we agreed to represent you, the first thing I would ask you was uh, for 50 copies of your headshot and resume. I remember those days. That was like the first thing. If you were to get representation, you had to have 50 sometimes a hundred uh, copies of your resume because not only did they want them to send out when needed but you also have to start marketing yourself and mailing resumes and uh, headshots on your own. Right, and those 50 copies usually didn't last us more than a month. Now, if you gave me 10 copies of your headshot and resume, a year later I probably would still have nine copies in my files, and the only reason one was missing was because the actor forgot to take their headshot and resume before they went for an audition. They came up here and used us as a storage unit. For exactly. Them. I, I feel the same way with the headshots. Um, uh, there's a couple of companies around town that will print out a minimum of like 15 to 25 because some companies still want to do a minimum of 100 and 200, and 100 resumes or headshots is a lot. In, in today's uh, entertainment industry, I could imagine I would have a hundred headshots. It probably last me three years. Uh, very rarely, with breakdown services, do does anyone ever ask me for a headshot when I actually go there? Because they have your electronic file. Because they have it electronically, or uh, I went on an audition recently where they actually they said, "Do you have a headshot?" And I said, "You know, I didn't bring one because normally they do have it." And she said, oh yeah, we do have it electronically, because I knew it went through breakdown services. Uh, typically, if it's an independent and it doesn't go through breakdown services is when I know I probably should bring a resume and headshot with me. Even then, if it's an independent, it might be on casting networks, and they also have the electronic file. Exactly. Most of the time, they, they, they do have the electronic file, or I'm, I'm really trying to be environmentally conscious, and like I can email it to you right now. Like I have it on my phone. And I think that's another important thing for an actor because we have uh, access to uh, smartphones and electronic devices. Keep a copy of your headshot and resume stored on your phone so that way if somebody emails you and asks for a copy of it, you can email it to them immediately and not have to wait till the end of the day when you get home or something like that. Uh, you can store it in the cloud now. There's all sorts of access you have to it. There's no reason why you can't send it out to somebody immediately. Which brings up a very interesting point. Um, today's actor, if they want to succeed in the business, they not only have to be an actor, but they also have to be a marketing person. Oh, the, excellent. The saying is, if you don't toot your horn, don't expect somebody to do it for you. And as a talent representative, um, we do a lot of tooting, but the fact of the matter is, you've got to promote yourself. We make sure that all our actors send out postcards. We make sure that they follow up. Um, one of the things that I always recommend an actor do is you don't go on an audition, get the name of the person that's auditioning you. And when you leave, send them a thank you card. Basically the same as your postcard, but with your picture on the front saying, Thank you for seeing me for today's audition. You can have that pre-printed. It doesn't matter. You know, if you want to be fancy, you can write it. Thank you for seeing me for Law and Order or for the blah, blah, blah. But the thank you card goes a long, long way. Um, Even I, if it's uh, um, I, I, in today's like, you know, society, uh, you know, we do a lot of things electronic. If you happen to have their, um, their information, like I have some casting director's information email, and I send it to them, a thank you letter via email, or um, some of them I put on my newsletter uh, uh, database, and they get something from me at least once a month. You know, it's like a constant communications. Uh, speaking of law and order, and I'll use that as an example, 
Um, I actually auditioned um, for the casting director two years ago for a job that I didn't get. Four months later, he called me up and said, hey, I got this, uh, this job for you. Uh, are you available? He said, you don't have to audition. I already have your audition on tape. So um, I constantly stayed in contact with him. I ended up, he ended up hiring me for three more jobs. And I just let my request, you know, made known, hey, I know you guys do Law & Order. I would love to be able to get on it if something comes up. And I, I didn't badger him, you know. I just stayed in constant communication. Because there's a thin line between badgering somebody and staying in constant communication. And sometimes I think as actors, we tend to badger people. Like, you know, on the subway, you see a casting director, and you want to shove your headshot in his face. It's not really the appropriate time, you know, to do it. But um, they hired me, and then when an opportunity did arise on Law and Order, they hired me. I had to audition, but they hired me because I stayed in constant communication. So it, you know, uh, that marketing. I think that uh, when you go to acting school, you come out of school, you don't really know enough about the business to 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 be successful in the business. And I feel like they don't teach you how to market yourself in school today. And that just needs to be something that either you follow with other people, follow with other people, or you know you take advice from people like yourself as far as a, a manager or your agent, and figure out what do you need to do to market yourself. Well, that's absolutely correct. I, I've um, noticed. I've interviewed people that have gone to NYU Tisch, and um, one of the things that I don't understand is that here is a world-renowned school for actors, one of the best colleges in the world. And in their acting program, they don't teach the business of acting. Mm -hmm. I'll see some of the people from that school, and they won't know a thing about how to market themselves. Oh, yeah, they're great. They could do Shakespeare. Well, that's wonderful, but you're not going to get the job just doing Shakespeare. Um, a perfect example. I had a guy go, one of my clients, go for a Febreze commercial. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the audition, he sent the casting director a little note. Now his girlfriend happens to be an illustrator, so she did a quick illustration of him as the person in the Febreze commercial. He was supposed to be a fisherman. Mm -hmm. Okay, The casting director couldn't decide who they were going to use for this commercial, and here came this postcard. So they said, let's use this guy. They called him in for the callback, he booked it after the callback, and so far he's made over $80,000. From, from a postcard. From a postcard. From a postcard. That's that's such an excellent story. You know, and I mean, it's still coming. I mean, we, we the big joke up here is every Monday we'll get a, uh, a bunch of checks from Talent Partners, which are the payroll services for most of the SAG stuff, and it'll be, you know, eight, six, seven thousand, depending on the day. I mean, it's like incredible. Uh, all because, because he, he thought a, this a little follow-up thank you postcard. Because he thought to send a postcard. Right. Wow. That's that's an amazing story, really. You see now, me? and this particular actor is booking all the time because not just the one commercial. Commercials pay a lot, but he's been booking one job after another after another because he knows how to market himself, mm -hmm. and that's what you have to do. Um, an actor has got to learn how to promote themselves. You know, if you were in any other industry, if you wrote a book, for example, uh, a press release would go out talking about the book, okay? Actors don't do anything. They expect, for example, one of the things that they do is they'll have a website, okay? Well, a website is a wonderful thing for your ego. It's great. Your, your friends, your family, they'll look at it. But do you honestly think that a casting director has the time to look at your website? Not no. in today's world. Your typical casting director starts their morning at 8 a.m. They leave their office after going through the dailies and everything. They leave their office around 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So they've already put in a 14-hour day. So after a 14-hour day, do you really think they're going to say, oh, I'm not going to go home to my family because I've got to look at so-and-so's website. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I think that, um, like, I come from an early uh, adoption of uh, the internet and marketing, and just having a website is one thing, but 
you you have to have your your website has to be interactive, has to be entertaining, has to be informative. It has to you have to drive traffic there. Um, it's not just put it because you can put a website up there and nobody sees it. But you have to you have to have a strategy to drive and make people want to see uh, something on your website, something exciting, new news, new clips or new things that you're in. It's got to be you know very interactive. You've got to be able to market it well, or you might as well not even have a website at all. I think exactly. Another thing you t you mentioned at the beginning of this interview is how people get representation. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can honestly say that on a bad day, I'll get 20 requests. I 20 requests get, on a bad day? On a bad day. I'll usually get between 30 and 40 requests, either email, snail mail, telephone solicitation, okay? Uh, walk-ins. We don't accept walk-ins, so if you walked into our office with your headshot and resume, uh, we'll open it. If you're not something really extraordinary, you'll go right into the wastebasket and you just wasted a buck. I think that, the, and that's something that you should know in the entertainment industry. I don't think anyone really likes walk-ins anymore. That's correct. That, and the, I mean, you, you, like you said, you have to be something extremely extraordinary. And everybody thinks that they are, but, you know, you should just mail it or email or something like that. Okay. Now, on the mail and the email, there's a cover letter that should come with your headshot and your resume, whether it's snail mail or email. Okay, most casting people, agents, managers prefer email to snail mail. Mm -hmm. The thing is, though, how... One second, I'm going to cut.